no matter the location. From OAK LA to LP, I'm a Raider. Raider Nation, what's going on? You guys are watching the Raiders Board, and today's show is presented by Panda Subs. So I was talking to the guy that owned Panda Subs because he's a diehard Raider fan. He was like, dude, F all these injuries, man, and I'm 100% with you. So if you guys are looking for the best workout supplements, maybe I can find something for my throat, head on over to pandasups.com and use code FINJURIES. That link is going to be available for you all in the comments down in the description as well. So what we're talking about here is the season-ending injuries to the Raiders offensive guard Denzel Good and defensive tackle Gerald McCoy. Both are in fact done for the 2021 season with knee injuries. So what I figured I would do here on today's show is talk about some potential replacements. But before I get into some of those guys, obviously both of these players, it definitely is going to hurt this Raiders roster on the offense and on the defensive side of the football. So let me know down in the comment section right now, what's the bigger loss? If you think losing DT, Gerald McCoy is the bigger loss, I want you to type GM. If you think it's Denzel Good, I want you to go ahead and type DG. I was excited to get McCoy, and I know McCoy was really, really pumped to be in the silver and black, but losing Denzel Good, your starting right guard, especially with all the injuries around Richie Incognito, I'm going to go ahead and type DG. So what you guys are going to be seeing coming up here on the show is replacements. Now what I decided to do is give you the top five free agents out there at the defensive tackle position and the top five free agents at the offensive guard. And I have it ranked five all the way down to one. Plus, I have players that need to step up on this Raiders roster because you're not just going to go out and sign a guy to totally replace somebody. It's also going to take in a team effort of the dudes on the team. So McCoy was carted off the field on Monday Night Football during that Ravens game. And anytime you see somebody carted off, it makes your heart stop a little bit and you hope that he's okay. The Raiders Raiders did sign Damian Square yesterday to the active roster, so that's kind of already your instant replacement, if you will. But the fact that McCoy didn't play last season, the fact that this Raiders team wants to be able to have a lot of defensive tackles is really one of the reasons why I was like, okay, I got to be able to find some replacements here. Now, I was impressed by what I saw out of Quentin Jefferson. He had 37 snaps, and when I saw Jonathan Hankins, he's more of a run stopper. What we're trying to look for here is somebody that can play that three technique because Solomon Thomas was a little bit too small for Gus Bradley's personal liking. It's why he only played 15 snaps this past week. Now, Darius Phylon was an absolute monster and was one of the clear winners in week one, so he's going to be a really big guy to kind of ring the bell here, and you're going to see a lot more of Jefferson, Thomas, Phylon, and Hankins. However, if you could go out again, who they just signed, Damian Square, and you throw him in the mix as well. So what do you guys think here? Should the Raiders go out and sign another defensive tackle? Let me know down in the comments y'all why for yes and for no i also want to give a major shout out to producer trace because this is his first show he's ever produced here at the raiders report so guys if you want throw some throw some threes down there in the comments so we're going to go five all the way down to one at number five in terms of some potential mccoy replacements he's probably not in the top list of top dt free agents out there but i know the raiders like him a lot it's darius still so stills the udfa out of west virginia had a lot of buzz going into this offseason and i I actually thought when he practiced, he did look halfway decent. Now, he's only 23 years old out of West Virginia, and this was a kid that I had a fifth-round grade on. One of the biggest reasons why I don't think he made the 53 or even the practice squad was more to do with injuries. Now, it does sound like he's kind of healthy. I've also talked to him on Instagram as well. He wants to come back to the silver and black. We'll see if it ends up happening. Number four, Damien Snacks Harrison. If you're looking for a run stopper, that's what you're going to get here at Harrison. Now, McCoy, he was one of the better DTs in terms of being able to get pressure on the quarterback. So, like, in terms of overall change, I guess, it's, what is it saying? Apples to apples, oranges to apples. I don't know exactly what I'm going for here, but uh, Harrison's more of a run stop in DT. He is 32 years old. He's got some experience, and if you're looking again for just a big body, 6'3", 350 pounds, he's at least a name to keep in mind. The next name coming up here on some potential McCoy replacements, Mike Pinnell. And this is one of those, again, where I'm just trying to find some dudes who maybe have a little bit of extra experience. He's an older veteran guy, 30 years old. Last season, he had 29 tackles. Also has some experience in the past playing in the AFC West, which I could definitely see somebody like Gus Bradley or John Gruden liking. But now the top two names on this list. And before I get into the next name, I do want to remind you guys one more time to go ahead and subscribe to the Raiders Report. I mean, we're keeping you guys up to date. I know I sound like absolute shit. I mean, I'm not... Dumb 
dumb about it. But you know what? I was like, I got to be able to give you guys the content that you want. So take a second or two. Look underneath that video. Click that big red button that says subscribe. And make sure you guys join me for my Raiders Steelers watch party. It's going to get started 15 minutes before kickoff. I want to get another 100,000 views on a watch party. Let's go to number two now. I got Kawan Short. And realistically, when I look at some of these McCoy replacements, I think that there's a clear tear break where Short is another big time, big time body, 6'3", 315 pounds. Sure, he's getting up there in age, and last season was definitely hindered by injuries. But I also know when Short has been healthy in the past, he has been one of their better DTs. I think one of the reasons why the Raiders went out and got McCoy is because they were looking for a little bit more of a veteran presence. So Short... Just saying, definitely somebody. But the clear number one dude that the Las Vegas Raiders need to pick up the phone for, it's Geno Atkins. The fact that Atkins is still out there as a free agent is actually a little bit surprising to me. When you look at the numbers last year, he played in eight games, only one tackle. That's because Cincinnati was trying to get some of these younger guys into action. But I really, really think the easiest clear adjustment to being able to replace Gerald McCoy out on the free agent market is going out and get Geno Atkins. He's getting up there in age but he's another player who's been able to show throughout his entire career. Not only can he stop the run, but he can also get after the quarterback. Now, some players that need to step up. I figured, okay, I'm going to look at the roster. I'm also going to look at the practice squad. You need to see more out of Cleveland Furl, right? I mean, if he was actually a healthy scratch, that's very concerning, but he's also played a little bit of DT last year. He needs to really step up. Kendall Vickers made the 53 last season, was a little bit short this year. He's on the practice squad. I expect him to probably be activated. Damon Square... Somebody, and then again, Solomon Thomas, all of these players here definitely, definitely need to be able to step up here for the Las Vegas Raiders. Now, one of my favorite products out there is the Fat Burner at Panda Subs. If you guys are wondering what the heck does it do exactly, imagine being able to burn calories when you're literally just sitting at your desk or while you're just sitting at home. It literally is just going to start sweating and you're just going to start melting away these calories. Again, it's at pandasubs.com. Use code F injuries because I'm sick and tired of all these injuries are happening. Now, if you're like me, you're trying to get into better shape, right? I mean, let's just face it. This past weekend was a rough one. So when I go to the gym later today, I can guarantee you this. I'm going to be taking a scoop of some of this pre-workout. But I will warn you, it, there is quite a bit of caffeine. So if you're not accustomed to caffeine, maybe take a half a scoop. But it's really going to be able to wake you up. My favorite part about that pre-workout is it wakes up your muscles. So exactly what does that mean? In order to get bigger muscles, you got to actually tear your old ones and then they regrow. This actually helps recover that process as well. So go to pandasupsyall.com, use code F injuries. Another injury that I'm just saying, damn it, man, I can't even stand this. Denzel Good, done for the 2021 season. If there is one thing, though, I want to be able to tip my cap to, it's toughness. And far too often, I think, in the NFL, guys are taking every excuse that they can not to play and just take a paycheck. Denzel Good tore his ACL on Monday Night Football, left the game, and then came back. Think about that. He tried to play through a torn ACL as an offensive lineman. That's absolutely insane. When he was asked about it after the game, he was like, "I felt like I could. I felt like I could do it. Like that's just that's crazy to me, right?" So the Raiders now they're definitely a little bit thin at the offensive guard position. Richie Incognito he didn't play this past week, and when you want to talk about injuries and being available. Actually, Trent Brown was more available for the Las Vegas Raiders on the offensive line than when Richie Incognito has over the last two years. Think about that for a second. So now you're going to have to rely potentially on John Simpson, maybe Jermaine Illuminor. Will Nick Martin be able to step up? But, I mean, this Raiders offensive line is scaring the hell out of me because Alex Leatherwood played terrible. Andre James played terrible this past week. John Simpson, Illuminor, their backups. The only guy that I have any confidence in right now is Colt Miller. So, Richie, I need you to get back out there on the football field. Now again guys, I asked you earlier on in the show about defensive tackle. So now I'm going to ask you offensive guard. And for those of you that don't know, I lived in Germany for a year, know a little bit of German, so that's what this language is down here, okay? Should the Raiders go out and sign another offensive guard or shit? Should they sign an original gangster at this point? You guys let me know. Type J for ja, which means yes, or you can type 9 for 9, which guess what? It means no. So I'm going to go ahead and say yeah, there's still plenty of good free agents out there at both DT and at the offensive guard position. Now for some of you that watch the show, you probably probably going to know some of the names that I bring up because I've mentioned them before. But at number five, I'm going to go J.R. Sweezy here. 
Sweezy to me is an average offensive guard, maybe even a little bit below average at this point in his career, but you're still looking for just extra depth. That's what this team desperately, desperately needs. So J.R. Sweezy, who played in 12 games last season, he's 6'5", 310 pounds, 32 years old. He did allow a sack. The next name coming up here is a name that a lot of y'all are very familiar with is Coleccio Semele. Kletcher was a longtime Raider great, I'd say, for a few years. Now, last season, he suffered a very serious knee injury, which actually was up against the Las Vegas Raiders, which, and he only was able to play in five games. Now, I don't 100% know how healthy he is, but if he's at least halfway healthy or at least 75, 80%, I could see Gruden going up, picking up the phone and calling somebody that's played on the Raiders, played on the Chiefs as well. At number three, I had a lot of people ask me on my Raiders live show yesterday, what's going on with David DeCastro? If David DeCastro was healthy, he would be number one on this list and it really would not even be close. The reason why the Pittsburgh Steelers released him and they decided to bring in Trey Turner is because they weren't confident in DeCastro being healthy. And he's also been somebody that's contemplated retirement. When you find somebody who is this good, and I mean like one of the best guards in the league when fully healthy, and he's still out there in the free agent market, a bell should go off in your head and say, oh no, I don't know how healthy this guy ultimately is. Now, I always get questions all the time, whether it's you know, on these shows or, or what have you. If you guys haven't already, you can always hit me up on Instagram or Twitter at MitchellRens365. My DMs are open for a reason. So seriously, take a second out of your day. Ask me something that you saw on today's show. Please don't be afraid. Instagram, Twitter, I'm just going to be honest, I check IG a lot more. It's at MitchellRens365. So we still got two more names to go over here as offensive guard replacements in terms of some free agents. At number two, I'm going to go with Joe Dahl. And Joe Dahl is probably the vanilla ice cream version or chocolate ice cream version of this where he's not really going to be anything crazy or creative but you know exactly what you're going to get and again a guy who played in five games last year still battled a little bit of injuries but he is somebody who's a lot younger and his versatility he can play left guard he can play right guard but at number one somebody again that I said multiple multiple times on my live show it's Nick Easton and I talked about Easton even two, three weeks ago saying, hey, this is somebody that I would call and this is somebody that would bring in. He's played center. He's played both left and right guard. He played in 12 games last year, two sacks allowed. I mean, for me, if you're looking for somebody with some versatility, because that was one of the biggest reasons why the Raiders went out and got Nick Martin, you give Nick Easton a call, you go ahead and bring him in. In fact, this would be my number one candidate. But again, if David DeCastro is healthy, then it changes up a few things. Now, some other players that really are going to have to step the hell up here on this Raiders team already. Jermaine Illuminor, he was been on offensive tackle. He's played some guard. He's going to have to step up now. He's probably going to be a starter. Nick Martin, I didn't like what I saw to him in the preseason, but if Andre Dames continues to struggle, Maybe they throw Nick Martin in there. Maybe they move uh, James over to guard. I don't know. Lester Cotton, he's on the practice squad. Jeremiah Patazzi, he's also on the practice squad. But then probably the top guy, Richie Incognito. You need, we need him to be healthy. He's a captain. I know he's missed a lot of playing time with that calf injury. But Richie, come on, man. I need you to, need you to get out there on the field. Now, if you guys made it this far in the video, I appreciate you. We're going to be doing more news and rumors. I believe we should be getting an update here soon. On some guys like uh, Yannick Gakwe, who right now he's battling a hamstring injury, and he play he plans to play on Sunday. So just gonna say that right now. So um, actually, that's that's f fake news. So it doesn't sound like Yannick Gakwe is gonna be playing on Sunday. That one literally just came through as I am filming this video. So Yannick Gakwe not gonna be playing. It sounds like up against the Pittsburgh Steelers on Sunday. If we get any more news or rumors to talk about, don't worry. I'm gonna keep you guys updated here at the Raiders. Report.